Welcome to Mystery Science Theater presents Kinematics Graphs. Today we're going to be learning about the different kinematics graphs, position versus time graphs, velocity versus time graphs, and acceleration versus time graphs. To look at this, let's first refresh our memory about constant velocity. When we have constant velocity, when we graphed position versus time, we saw that the graph was linear. And on that linear graph, we recognize that the slope is equal to the velocity of the object that constant velocity. The intercept represented the initial position. When we graphed velocity versus time, because the velocity is constant, we could see that here in this particular example we have a positive constant slope of this line, so we could have a positive constant velocity. Whatever the slope is of the position time graph is the velocity on the velocity time graph. So a nice constant positive velocity there. So that's what those graphs look like when we have constant velocity. So what do the graphs look like when we have acceleration? Well, let's remind ourselves what acceleration is. Acceleration means that our velocity is changing. And acceleration is equal to the change in velocity divided by the amount of time over which it is changing. So if we want to look at the graphs of motion for an accelerating object, let's, let's look at what we can see. So here, if we have a position time graph, and if, remember the slope of a position time graph is the velocity. So if the velocity is changing, that means the slope is changing. So let's look at one example. One example would be a graph that looks like this. You can see here, it's a curvy graph. Because it's curvy, that tells us that the slope is not constant. Now, we know that the slope of a position time graph is the velocity. So how do we find the slope of a curve? Well, if we pick the starting point and the ending point, and we do rise over run, the rise, we notice, would give us our change in x, and the run gives us our change in time. And change in x, another name for that is displacement. So when we have displacement over time, the slope here is actually giving us the slope of the line that connects these two points. And this, displacement over time, is what we call average velocity. But what if we don't want the average velocity? What if we want to know how fast an object is moving at a particular time? Say, right here. So if I want to know how fast it's moving right there at that instant of time, we call that the instantaneous velocity. See the, see the root word instant in instantaneous. That means how fast it's moving at a particular instant of time. Well, to find the instantaneous velocity, I can use what I know about the average velocity and the slope. So rather than picking a point at the beginning and end of the whole trip, I'm going to pick a point just a little bit to the left and another point just a little bit to the right of the point in question. I then take a straight edge and I draw the line that connects that. This line is called a tangent line. And the slope of the tangent line represents the instantaneous velocity. So the slope of the tangent line represents instantaneous velocity. Let's take a look at a, this position versus time graph and see what we can learn. So if we have a position time graph that looks like this, we can draw tangent lines and you can use a pencil or a straight edge to represent the tangent line as you're doing this. So if I do a tangent line right here at the beginning, I can see that it's pretty low slope. It's pretty horizontal. It's basically it's zero, zero slope. So if I do another one here, do that tangent line, you can see it's getting a little bit steeper, a little bit steeper. And as time goes on, that tangent line gets steeper and steeper and steeper. Well, on my velocity versus time, what that's going to look like is I start out with zero velocity because I started with zero slope and my velocity is getting a little bit more positive and a little bit more positive and a little bit more positive and so I can see what shape I'm getting here is a linear velocity versus time graph. That's showing me that my velocity started at zero and I'm getting faster and faster and faster in the positive direction. 
Now we also learned that the slope of a velocity graph is the acceleration. And so I can see here on this velocity graph, I have a positive constant slope, and therefore I have a positive constant acceleration. So that's how I can tell what these graphs are supposed to look like. I look at that position versus time graph, I imagine the tangent line or I draw the tangent line, and I look at the slope of that tangent. So in this case, for this top opening parabola, it starts out with a slope of zero. Then the tangent line gets a little more positive, a little more positive, a little more positive. So our velocity starts at zero, gets a little more positive, a little more positive, a little more positive. We look at that velocity graph, it's linear, and the slope of that velocity graph gives us our acceleration graph. So the velocity graph, a constant positive slope, means the acceleration is a constant positive acceleration. Let's try this example. Suppose we have a position versus time graph that looks like this. What will the velocity versus time graph look like? And what will the acceleration versus time graph look like? Take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can figure this out. All right, so to figure this out, the first thing we want to do is take our pencil or straight edge and look at the tangent line on this position versus time graph. At the beginning, that tangent line has a steep positive slope. And so my velocity is going to start with a positive value. Now, as I see what's happening, the tangent line gets a little less steep, and a little less steep, and a little less steep, ending with a zero slope. So my velocity goes from a positive value and ends at zero. And so what I end up with is a nice linear graph starting with a positive value and ending at zero. This is showing me that my object starts out moving fast, but is slowing down as time goes on ending at a stop. So my acceleration versus time graph is going to be simply the slope of my velocity versus time graph. This velocity versus time graph has a negative slope and it's constant and so I have a constant negative acceleration. Let's try another example. Suppose I have a position versus time graph that looks like this. Now what do we do? Take a moment to think about it. See if you can figure out what the velocity versus time graph will look like. So on this one, we can see that the position versus time graph, the tangent line at the beginning, starts out very negative. About halfway through, that tangent line has a slope of zero. And at the end, that tangent line has a very positive slope. So my velocity graph is going to start out negative. About halfway through, it's going to be zero and it's going to end with a positive. So I can see what this is going to look like. This velocity versus time graph is going to be a nice linear graph starting negative, crossing zero, and into positive. Now if I look at the acceleration versus time graph, I know that it's just the slope of my velocity versus time graph. So here on this velocity graph, we can see that it has a positive constant slope, and therefore a positive constant acceleration. Let's try this one. Suppose our position time graph looks like this. What will the velocity versus time graph look like? What will the acceleration versus time graph look like? Take just a moment and see if you can figure it out. So here, if we look, our tangent line at the beginning is negative. And at the end, slope of the tangent line is zero. So our velocity versus time graph starts negative and ends at zero. So it's a nice linear graph like this. What about the acceleration versus time graph? Well, it's simply the slope of our velocity time, and our velocity time graph has a positive slope, so therefore we have a positive constant acceleration. We'll look at just one more example. Suppose our position versus time graph looked like this. Now what does the velocity versus time graph look like in the acceleration versus time graph? I can see here the tangent line has a slope pretty close to zero at the beginning, and then at the end has a negative slope. So my velocity time graph would start at zero, and at the end it would be negative. And so a nice linear graph on velocity with a negative slope. Therefore my acceleration versus time graph is going to have a constant negative acceleration.
I hope you've enjoyed learning about kinematics graphs, how to go from a position graph to a velocity graph to an acceleration graph. If you have any questions, feel free to leave some comments. Thank you.